Hi, welcome to another scrapbooking process video. Today I made a layout for the 27 day challenge that I have going on over on my Facebook group. I also use the hip kit from the month of August. So let's jump right into the process. So I'm starting with my hip kit for August. I have these three photos of one of my daughter's first days of school. This is Liv's first day of junior high. I have a not so great photo, but it's kind of cool that the bus is coming and I have a couple of these photos. For some reason, it seems to rain on the first day of school a lot around here. So I have a few of these photos of the bus, of the bus coming on a rainy day. And so I wanted to include this. And then I have these other two photos that kind of capture some of Liv's apprehension about starting junior high. And she's also starting French immersion. So that's a thing for her. And then here she is in the car. I drove her to the bus stop because it was literally, it was pouring when she was supposed to leave. So, and we couldn't find any umbrellas. So I have these photos to scrap and I am going to be playing along with Mercy Tiara's 27 day scrappy challenge, which I actually, although I do host this challenge, I haven't played along in several months. So I'm very excited to be hopping on board. And uh, Casey Lane is the winner from last month. So she got to choose the challenge for us. And she has challenged us to scrap something fall related uh, or if it's on the other side of the world, then certainly spring related is fine. Use at least four pattern papers, use a stamp, add journaling to the page, use multiple photos and use a die cut. So I'm going to try to do all of those six things. And if you would like to play along with us on our 27 day scrappy challenge, uh, all that you have to do is hop on over to Facebook and join our group. I'll leave the link in the information section below. And I think I also usually put it at the end of most of my videos. So check that out if you'd like to play along. I It used to be a YouTube challenge, but now it is it, it was just too difficult for me to manage it in two different places, so I've moved the whole challenge over to the Facebook group, so uh, I'm sorry for those of you who are not on Facebook. Uh, I do plenty of giveaways here on my YouTube channel as well, So and I have several coming up. I've kind of been having more giveaways than I've had time to post giveaways, so there's going to be a lot of giveaways on my channel over the next couple of weeks and months, so uh, I hope that you guys will understand why I've moved it. So anyhow, uh, I have the August kit from the Hip Kit Club here that I'm going to be using. I have all of the extra paper, like the extra pattern paper and the cardstock in one bag, and then I have all the rest of it in this other bag. And so I'm going to just uh, go ahead and get scrapping. So I'm going to start by trimming up my photos here. I have my Creative Memories trimmer, which is a little guillotine trimmer. I love to use it for trimming down my photos or for just doing any small trimmer work that I need to do. These photos I printed on my Epsom Picture Mate charm and they are printed at three by three. And uh, that means that if I set them out side by side or one on top of another, they're going to take up about nine inches of space. Now, I don't want the two pictures of Olivia to be pointing, you know, in opposite directions, like, like against each other. I don't want her to be looking off of the layout. I'd rather have her looking into the layout if I were to lay them horizontally. But I thought that this was a good opportunity for me to actually try to do a stacked layout, like a like a more ver vertically oriented layout, which is something that I keep trying to do. And I keep not doing it. And I don't know if I've included that in some of my narrations, but I have actually set out for the past you know, several layouts, many of them, a high proportion of them have been intended to be vertical layouts and they just sort of work their way into a more horizontal or square or diagonal or whatever. Uh, so I'm going to give it another try. This is a stamp set that I have. It's called, it's from Close to My Heart and it's called uh, School Year, Stamp of the Month. And I got this basically because I had bought some storage units that I am going to do a video on. I got some storage units from Close to My Heart. This is the first time I've ever bought anything from Close to My Heart. So I'm really excited to have these storage units. And I bought two of them and it ended up qualifying me for a reduction. I got this stamp set for less than what I normally would have paid for it. So that's why I picked it up. I was actually thinking about giving it away because I don't use a whole lot of stamps. But now I'm thinking, oh, I really like this set. I might just keep it. I have lots of other things to give away. 
way as well. So uh, I started by setting up my photos in a pretty casual way like this. And I'm going to take a photo of it if I haven't already because I like the way these the way the photos are stacked right now. I like how casual they look. And one of the things on this challenge is to use uh, at least four pattern papers. And I don't usually have a hard time using four pattern papers, uh, but I just want to make sure that I do actually follow that. So what I'm thinking is I might actually cut a whole bunch of squares to layer behind these photos so that it'll be kind of like a patchwork look with different size squares all behind these photos and then these photos would be the top layer of those squares and I'm just emphasizing here that I wanted to go up and down in general and I'm thinking I might want to mat these photos and I'm I'm leaning against matting in black I've been doing a lot of matting in black and I just want this layout to have a softer look than some of my more recent layouts my more recent layouts have had very high contrast with lots of black sewing I love this what I call eyelash paper and so I am going to I'm sorry my camera settings were definitely not right this time I had made a note of the proper settings last time I got a lot of great feedback last time um, and then I made a note to do it and I didn't do it at all so these are actually my old settings and it's I know it's problematic so sorry about that I will try to remember I have a little sticker on my camera and everything that says remember to change the settings and when I came down I said oh yeah I have to remember to change the settings and then I just sat down and scrapbooked without changing the settings <laughs> yeah so anyhow, um, next video should have better uh, lighting and contrast. So I am cutting a variety of different squares with the pattern paper that I have picked out here. It's just basically patterns from the from the collection. Uh, two of them there, or three of them, are from the Maggie Holmes Carousel collection, and that navy blue one with the pluses on it is from Echo Park Summer Dreams collection. And now uh, here I am choosing a fifth pattern paper. This is also from Maggie Holmes Carousel, and uh, I think it is. I could be wrong about that. It might be a hip kit exclusive paper. Uh, no, it's pink paisley summer lights actually. Sorry about that. Uh, so anyhow, I am going to mat these photos on this gray pattern paper. It's very subtle pattern and I like that about it. And I'm just, I'm just wanting to add a very subtle extra detail. These photos are already like on a, they already have a white border around them. And I can't decide here if I'm going to use that pattern paper as my background or if I'm going to use white. I'm going to start just by setting out these squares. I basically cut at least two, or for most of them, I cut two largish squares that were a little bit more than three inches because three inches is the size of my photos. And then I cut at least two small squares that were smaller than three inches of each pattern. And I just wanted a whole assortment of the four different patterns. And so I just kind of set them out trying to spread them out. I started with the larger ones because I wanted them on the bottom and then I just layered my way up using the medium ones and then the really small ones. And this is what I came up with. I really like this pattern actually. When I set my photos on top of it though, they're sort of blending in too much with the patterns. And I'm thinking about going down to two photos instead of the three. I don't really love that photo of the bus, but I also kind of like it for the context that it brings. Um, so I, I, I'm not going to make a real decision about that, but I'm wondering if I'm going to outline these squares or if I'm going to sew around them. If I sew around them, I'm thinking I'll probably sew in white and not in black because I don't want so much contrast. So here I am over at my sewing machine and I'm going to use my big sewing machine because I'm not using black and also because I don't know if, if you've watched some of my more recent videos but lately my smaller sewing machine which tends to struggle with with tension has been rounding the corners because it, I just can't get the tension right on it uh, and so there I am just saying hello to you guys uh, and I decided to thread my my machine in gray instead of white I basically I went to go get my white thread and right beside my white thread was this spool of gray and I just thought that it would work well with the uh, with the patterns that I have picked out and the fact that the photos are already uh, matted on 
I'm not going to outline the, the, the photos, but I just thought that adding another touch of gray to everything would be nice. Now, sewing around these paper, these individual squares is going to take a lot of time, but I really think it's worth it because it adds such a beautiful detail of texture and interest to these squares. The other thing that it does is very similar to outlining with marker. Outlining by stitching also pulls otherwise disparate patterns together and helps them look like they all coordinate and, and look like they all belong on your page. So I am going to take some time. So I'm sorry that my hand is kind of in the way as I sew here. Uh, I need to work work on figuring out the angle that I need to keep this camera so that you can see. I had a better tripod that gave me a bird's eye view of the of the sewing machine and it's it ended up not working as well like it's broken it doesn't work as well so I had just changed to something else but I think I need a taller a taller tripod for here. Anyhow I'll figure that out eventually and uh, yeah, so I'm just sewing around all of these. I'm not going to show you all of this process. I really don't like to edit out my process. I like to give you guys a good sense of just how long things actually take, even though everything is fast forwarded to four times. Uh, but in this case, it was going to be quite repetitive. So I ended up, I did about half of them on camera and then the rest of them off. So uh, here I am just cutting off the threads and I'm cutting them so that there's a little bit of thread showing like I'm not being really careful about cutting them really tight. I want a little bit of the threads to be showing maybe like a couple of millimeters. So I'm going to refer to that photo that I took because it it helps me because I had already decided how to lay them out. I thought I might as well, you know, do that because I, I know that that works. And I'm just uh, using my ATG to put all these down. And referring quite closely to the, the photo so that I get them all right. At this point, I'm thinking, wait a minute, I think I lost a pattern. I'm counting them. And it looks like that lower square is smaller than I was expecting it to be. And so I just went over to my sewing machine to make sure I didn't lose one and I didn't. I'm thinking, no, they're all here. It just, they look different for some reason in real life than they do in the photo, but that's okay. So I got rid of that background paper because like that pattern paper that I was keeping as an option because I'm not going to use it. So I might as well get rid of it. And I'm basically, I'm balancing the large and the small and also the pattern so that they're not too close to one another, like so that two similar Two of the same pattern aren't right beside each other necessarily and I'm also just trying to make it look visually interesting all along the outside edges where you're going to see because on the inside you're not going to see it so much because the photos are going to cover it. I'm being a lot more careful about the outside edges than I am about how it looks along the center. So I did a last minute switch there. I like how that looks and there is that trapped piece of blue but see how that top photo is going to cover it up and I like that if I wasn't using photos in the center I would have to be careful about that but I wasn't careful because I knew I'd be covering things up. So I'm liking how that looks but I still feel like those photos are going to get lost on this layout. So I grabbed some cardstock including some black and a couple shades of gray. I thought black was going to add just too much contrast but this really dark shade of gray I thought worked really well and it picks up on the gray threading on the outlining of all of those little squares. And where the photos don't have the thread it's nice that they have this bit of darkish gray. I guess it's kind of like a medium gray. As I go, I'm just keeping track of the things I'm doing for the challenge. So I've definitely, it's definitely a back to school project. So that fits with the fall theme. I've got my four pattern papers. In fact, at this point, I've got five uh, and I've got multiple photos. So I just checked those off. I'm really sorry that everything is overexposed. Oh, that's really frustrating since I spent all that time figuring out my camera settings. I spent about an hour one day just figuring it all out and writing it down so that I could always use those settings. Anyhow, I'm not going to dwell too much on it. So yeah, I was just saying something for the camera there. I can't remember what. So there we go. 
and I like how that looks. I'm going to further separate these photos from the background by pop dotting them. So I had to go into my stash and get my next set of Stampin' Up! Dimensional Adhesive. I love Stampin' Up! Dimensional Adhesive. I love that they're hexagons. I love that you can use the outsides and I'm just using the outsides of my last couple of pieces before I open a new package. And uh, there we go. And so by popping them up, it gives me that much more dimension on this page. And it also helps the photos separate from the background a little bit because there'll be a little gray shadow around the edges of these photos where they are popped up a little bit. And I like that look quite a lot. So now I am referring back to that original photo that I took at the very beginning of making this page and I'm just trying to make sure that the way these photos line up looks nice with the edges of all of those squares. And I don't want the photos to be straight. I have made all of the squares straight, meaning perpendicular and 90 degree angles. But with the photos, I want it to look a little bit more like the photos are just placed there. So now see that piece of mint paper with the polka dots? That uh, that piece has this problematic little horizontal area right there. And basically, I need that little horizontal area to either be large enough that it looks like it's there on purpose or completely hidden. I don't want just a little sliver of that showing. Otherwise, it just is more distracting and it doesn't serve a nice design purpose. So I'm going to position this last photo like that and uh, I do put it fairly askew. Again, I'm trying to make my photos be more casually placed than the background pieces, but I am later going to realize that that's actually a little bit too distracting there and, I'm pro and I am going to uh, straighten it out in a few minutes. So I just uh, trimmed the top and the bottom where the, where the where the squares were hanging off the, the top and the bottom of the page. And now I'm thinking about what am I going to do with that stamp? It says first day of school. I definitely want to use it. It will fulfill part of the challenge. And I've just zoomed in a little bit so that you can see as I'm just picking what my embellishments might be. I do have to use a die cut on this. I'm thinking maybe a frame with some paper or vellum inside of it for my journaling. And then it occurred to me that I might want to use my die cut machine and, and uh, kind of make my own die cut. So I'm thinking I'm going to pull off that stamp and I'm sorry that some of this is out of frame. I guess I zoomed in a little bit too much, but I'm going to place that stamp, which I love by the way, it's such a great quality stamp. It's very sticky. I like sticky stamps. Uh, and it fits perfectly inside of this square nestability that I have. This is just a die that I have from years and years ago when I first started scrapbooking. And I'm going to use my Cuddle Kid, which is my my small die cut machine. I have three die cut, three manual die cut machines. I have a really big one. I have a regular big shot and then I have this little tabletop one. I like this one especially for process videos and for smaller things because you don't have to drag, dig out all the supplies that go with the big shot. So uh, I wanted something fairly neutral. So I picked the white painted board on that pattern paper of painted planks and uh, you can't quite see it because of the overexposure of this video, but it is a wood grain uh, paper. And it's like a painted, like a whitewashed white uh, painted piece of wood. And so I'm using some Lawn Fawn ink, some in gray. Let me just get the color for you. It's called Storm Cloud. And that's nice because it's almost black, but it's not quite black. And so I just uh, cleaned off my stamp by stamping it a bunch of times on another piece of paper. And there we go. This will serve maybe as the title or maybe as an embellishment. I wasn't quite sure. I did run back to my sewing machine and off camera added some stitching around it so that it fits in with the other pattern papers, just where it isn't a pattern like the other ones. I wanted it to fit in, so I just ran it through the sewing machine. Here I am straightening out this photo. It, it, it doesn't need to be fully straight, but just a little bit less askew. I think it was just grabbing your attention a little bit too much the way that it was. So I'm recognizing that there is this little problematic space here uh, with the 
dotted patterns showing through. And I don't know if I'm going to do, I'm kind of making a mental note to maybe address that. It doesn't pop out at you. It's not like if it were with the navy blue pattern paper, it would really stand out. But where that paper kind of blends in a little bit better, it doesn't really pop out. So I'm making a mental note to come back and, and maybe put an element there or something like a, an embellishment. But I end up not doing that. And it doesn't stand out to me anyways as being terribly wrong or bad. So that's fine. Now, at this point, I'm thinking about what am I going to do for my title? I, I thought about maybe playing on the word pink there because we kind of tease her a little bit. She likes the pink brand. It's a store and uh, she likes that brand of clothes and she buys a lot of it herself with the money that she earns. Um, and yeah, we tease her about the fact that she has all this pink stuff, but none of it is actually the color pink. And so I thought about maybe using those pink letters to do that. Then it, I, I'm deciding here to use that top corner of the eyelash paper, the pink and yellow pattern paper. Uh, I'm going to use that paper as that like that little square as a place to put my journaling. So I measured it and it is a little bit more than two and a half by two and a half. I grabbed my We Are Memory Keepers Typecast Typewriter, which I uh, haven't used all that much since I've gotten it. I do like it. It's good, especially for printing for typing on 12 by 12 papers. And I'm, I like my typing to be very casual and not really lined up. So I never really use tabs. And in this case, I'm wishing that I had used tabs because I might have liked this to be lined up, but I just go with it. I did make a mistake and you'll see that I'm what I'm going to do about that. So my journaling, let me just grab it here. It says Liv was a bit nervous and a lot excited about the first day of junior high and the first day in French immersion. So uh, I use this short version of Junior on purpose so that this type so that this journaling would fit. And you'll see that I had a stray F there. I, I almost put the word first where it wouldn't have fit. So I just crossed that off to remind myself to go back and maybe put an enamel dot or do something there. Now I want to cut this. I'm trimming it down with my Creative Memories trimmer to uh, a little bit less than 2.5 by 2.5 so that it will fit in that square that I've already measured to be 2.5 by 2.5. Basically, I don't want to cover up the stitching. I want it to be, I want this to be noticeably smaller than the square that it's going to be mounted upon. And then I forgot that this, <laughs> that this uh, whole square actually isn't showing. And so in order for the jour journaling to be legible, I'm going to have to overlap it and move it over a little bit to the right. So that's what I did there. There we go. So I like how that looks. I love the look, the look of a real typewriter on my pages. I love how vintage and old it looks. It adds a really nice, interesting uh, touch to your page. So there I decided to use one of those wooden buttons to cover up that stray F. And I just am using some ATG to stick that down. They come with little glue dots on them, but I want to be able to move it around in case I change my mind. And so the ATG adhesive is a little bit more forgiving and allows you to move things around a little bit more than a glue dot. So I added a black other one of those buttons and those buttons are exclusive to the hip kit club and they came in the kit. Everything I'm using here today came in the kit. And I decided that uh, I needed a third cluster here. So I've got the top cluster over where the journaling is. And then I have that mid over to the left journaling with the with what is going to end up being the title. But I'm not sure if that's going to be the title or an embellishment at this point. And now down here in the bottom right hand corner, I thought I might put a title. But this camera is really wanting to go on this page. So I decided to put it there. Even though it is the same color as the banner that is going to be layered on top of it, it would be a little bit nicer, I think, if the banner was pink or even yellow, but, uh, but preferably pink, but it's not, so that's fine. It, these are some letter stickers that came in, I believe, in the Project Life kit from HipKit this month. And I decided that I would use my Thickers positioning tool to, uh, to spell out the name of her junior high school. 
So here I am and then I'm realizing, wait a minute, I'm spelling it out straight and I have these thicker alignment guides. So if I'm going to use a thicker alignment guide anyways, I might as well use the rounded one so that my words will actually fit on this rounded sticker. <laughs> And wow, I really love having these tools on hand. It's one of those things that I might not use a curved title every single day that I scrapbook, but on those occasions when I do want a curved title, it is really, really handy to have these alignment guides. I'm really loving having them. So thank you so much to American Crafts. They did send them to me for free, so... There we go. Five Bridges just fits perfectly there. I was a little worried about it, but it did fit. So that was good. And I'm just showing you there that I use the large waveguide of those thicker alignment tools. I'm going to make a video just about those alignment tools so that you can see them up close and uh, whatnot. So now I'm just taking some of those dimensional adhesive. Again, I'm trying to use up the end of that package. So I just uh, cut it. And now some of those clear, those are clear letter stickers. So some of the clear sticker part was actually hanging off the edge of that, of that uh, banner sticker. So I just trimmed it up so that it wouldn't look weird. And I'm aligning that so it's layered over top of the camera. And then I'm doing a little bit of switching here. Oops, I think I'm gonna zoom out pretty soon, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, trying to decide where to put the black wooden button sticker and where to put the colorful ones. And there was a bit of smudginess on the edges of my page, so I just used an eraser to get rid of it. I guess it was kind of like a grimy, like maybe my hands were greasy or something. Now these stickers I thought might make a nice white tone on tone kind of accent but what I don't like about them they're from uh, from Bella Boulevard and they have a slightly blue hue to them so I didn't really like them on the page so I took them off. I feel like I might need something to soften this up and this was actually I, I really was pretty sure I wouldn't like this but I thought let's just try it just to see and I inserted these two black and white die cuts right here and I thought oh, I don't think I like it but then when I looked in the camera lens like the the LCD part of the camera to see it from above I actually really liked how it looked I thought it did a really nice job of softening it up the problem is that I only have two of those die cuts and so I uh, cut this piece of chipboard in half to just see how it would look with the third one I, I did feel like I needed three if I was going to do this I had to do three and so uh, then I was going to peel the, the chipboard so that it wasn't as thick. And then I remembered I had the sticker set and that the sticker set had another one of those black and white florals. So I just grabbed that off the sticker set instead. The sticker set is already sticky, so I didn't have to add adhesive to that. But you just saw me add ATG to the other two. And I like how that really does soften the page. I, I kind of, I was hesitant because I like the fact that the page is not soft, but I think adding those leaves there just it does soften it up and it makes it look a little bit gentler <laughs> and then I'm just adding those gold sequins that come in the kit they were part of the embellishments set like the uh, Maggie Holmes carousel ephemera pack I'm using my Stampin' Up glue pen to stick those down there we go And they had glitter on them, so I had to just kind of, I don't know why there was glitter on them. I think there was something else glittery in the package or something. So I just had to move the glitter off the background page. And now I'm just thinking, is this all that I'm going to do? I, I feel like there, that, like there needs to be something horizontal below my journaling. Like that, that cluster is, is missing a little something. Because there's the bow in the one on the, on the left, and then there's the camera in the bottom one on the right. And then there's really kind of like nothing other than that little button on that top right hand em embellishment cluster so I'm actually looking through my stash now I can't find anything in the kit that is horizontal and I, I want something something long and thin to put below my like see right there so this is from another set of Maggie Holmes stickers that came in a previous kit and I, I was looking at my Maggie Holmes stuff just because it, it will have a similar color scheme to what this is. And then I thought I could put these puffy stickers and uh, it looks a little bit too cluttered, like too, 
too much. Like the other two embellishments are like large singular things. They're not like clusters of multiple little things. So I felt like I needed something that was a little bit more um, solo, like something more of like a one thing to put there instead of a series of things. Now I know I am here adding, like I'm putting two stickers together, but it's really just the camera is the main embellishment here. And the, the sticker that I cut apart and used as a background for my camera really just serves to anchor the camera. And so I like that because the other camera has a little star sticker in the center, I decided to put a star sticker in the center of this camera as well. And that's nice. I feel like the uh, clusters are balanced now. They each have something and then also the black and white and the wooden button and then the two star sequences, sequins. Uh, so that's nice. Like it kind of ties them together. Uh, yeah, I really like how this page turned out. I, f I really, I want to do more of this, like layering of small bits of pattern paper and then putting my, putting my, my photos and embellishments on top of it. It's a really nice way to use lots of pattern. And what I love about it is that you actually don't have to do a whole lot of embellishing when you do this because there's so much going on with all the patterns that really I only wanted to add a few embellishments that had great impact. And the only places that I used small embellishments was on the background, on that white background paper so that they kind of stood, they can hold their own a little bit better on a plain background than they could if I had layered those smaller embellishments amongst all of those patterns. So I just really liked how those patterns looked on the background paper. So I just grabbed a shot of that with my phone before I moved on to the next step. So here are the photos that show you how this page looks up close and with nice lighting and so on. The, the coloring is more accurate on these photos than it is in the video. Love this kit. This kit has so many pretty and fun items to use. I especially love those little those little uh, star sequins and also the little star uh, stickers are really cute too. And those bows I adore. Those black and white fabric bows are just so cute. So I am going to put up a screen that has the website for like the URL for my Facebook group so make sure you check that out there's also always a link to that group in all of my videos in the information section so take care and have a really great scrappy week